Welcome to Intro to AP Computer Science A, Getting Started with Tokyo EdTech. That would be me. Today, I'm going to show you how to get started with Java programming. Now, the focus is on AP Computer Science, but this is for anybody who's interested in learning Java. Um, so if you haven't done Java programming before, uh, there's a few things that we need to do first. Um, so, for example, we need to download what's called the Java Software Development Kit. This is the, this is the program that lets us write Java and compile it and do a couple other things. Uh, then we also need some sort of editor. Uh, we need to be able to edit our code. Now there are tons of different options. I'm going to recommend one called Genie. It's very simple. It's great for beginners. Now those of you that can't download, let's say you're on a Chromebook or something, you can also use a, a website called REPL.IT. Uh, and this is an online coding environment. You just sign up with your Gmail account or whatever you use, and then you can code directly in the browser. Um, so I'm going to show you a, a simple program in Java, just how to get a Java program working. We're going to show you how to compile it and then finally execute it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so first, as I mentioned, we need to download the Java SDK. Now, depending on your system, let's say you're a Windows user, you're a Mac user. Now, I'm a Linux user. That's why it may look a little bit different to you. Um, so this is, the, this is the link here. It's oracle.com slash java slash technology slash downloads. I'll put a link you know, down below for you. There is Java Development Kit 20. Again, you can choose you know, whichever operating system. If you're a Windows person, if you're a Mac person, uh, or if you're a Linux person, you choose the one that's correct for your system. You just download it and install it. It should be good to go. Second thing is you need to download a programming editor. Again, as I mentioned, I use Genie. Uh, I use this with all my students. It's you know, featured enough that it's not super basic, uh, but it also doesn't do too much that's confusing for beginners. So you just go ahead and click download here. It will take you to the right version for your operating system. Again, whether it's Linux, Windows, or Mac, and just install it, and then you can run it. As I mentioned, alternatively, you can go to this website, repl.it.com. Actually, I don't know. I put repl.it. I think that works as well. And you just basically go there. You create an account, and you can go ahead and click on Create Repl. And then you just have to tell it what language you're doing. So in this case, it'll be Java. And we would just choose the very first one where it says Java Repl it. And then it gives it a little title. You can keep that or you know, do whatever you want. So you do create REPL. Now I'm gonna go ahead and type this into Genie because this is what I use with my students. But you can go ahead and type everything in here. Now you can see that they've actually already done it for you. Um, there's a couple things they've done a little bit differently than I would do and I'll point those out here in, in a minute. Um, so let me go over to Genie. I'm gonna open that up. So if you open up Genie and you haven't used it before, you should see where it says untitled and then uh, it's basically just a blank page. Now I have mine set up a little bit differently already. I do have a video about Genie if you want to take a look at that. I'll try and put a link down below if I forget, somebody remind me. And basically right now we can start typing our program. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit file and I'm going to save this. Now I've created a folder somewhere, I think it's a documents and Java files. And this part is important. Um, the way we name our files is very strictly, I don't know, strictly enforced in Java. Other languages aren't quite so strict, but Java, you gotta do things a certain way. So what we're gonna be doing today is, t is printing hello world on the screen. So I'm gonna call this hello world.java. Notice, it is a capital H, it is a capital W. This is part of the naming convention for Java. You have to do it this way. Also notice there are no spaces. We can't have spaces and it is dot java no space at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And this tells the computer, this says, okay, this is a Java file. So you see where it says here, hello world dot java. Now, unlike other programming languages, so for example, this was Python, I could just type print hello world and we would be done. Uh, that's a perfectly valid Python program, but this is not Python, this is Java. Um, Java is what's known as a class-based or an object-oriented language. Everything has to be a class. So we need to create a class. And you'll learn more about that as you go through this video series. Now the class name has to match the file name. So hello world, no dot Java. I'm gonna go to the next line. I'm gonna put a left brace, or some people call it curly brace. And then I'm gonna put public static void main string args 
Notice the parentheses, and put a little space there, and some extra curly braces. So this is the bare minimum that you need for a Java file to execute. Okay. So I have a class, and then this parenthesis, or sorry, this brace and this brace. This is the opening brace, this is the closing brace. So everything in between is part of the hello world class. I've created what's called the main method. And this is, you just gotta basically memorize this. You know, it's public, static, void, main, string, square brackets, and then args, and then parentheses, and then left brace and right brace, or opening brace and closing brace. Then what happens is everything here, so your code goes here. You're, for now, we'll, you'll learn more as you go on. For now, this is the part of the code that actually gets executed. So as I said earlier, what we're gonna do is we're gonna print hello world. This is like the standard programmer first program. So I'm gonna put system.out.println parentheses quotes, or double quotes I should say, and hello world, exclamation point. And at the very end of the line, I'm gonna put a semicolon. Um, so this line here is a comment. So slash slash is a single line comment. This is not executed. The computer basically just pretends it's not there. But we put it in there so that humans know what we are doing. So to execute a Java program, we first have to compile it to something called byte code. And again, it's something you can learn more about later. Um, so it's a two-step process. So in Genie, there is a button here. Yours might be a little different based on your operating system, but it's around here somewhere. And if you hover over it, it'll say, compile the current file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And you'll see down here, it's a little hard to see because of the colors. It says J-A-V-A-C, hello world.java, wherever you saved it. So this is the Java compiler. And it says compilation finished successfully. So if I were to go to that folder, and where was that? Documents, Java files. Now you'll see hello world.class. Um, so this is something called bytecode. As a human being, you wouldn't understand it because it's all like numbers and symbols. Um, this is what we're working on. So this is converted into this. And then when we want to execute it, we click this button here, which says run or view the current file. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And you can see down here it says hello world. You'll see program exited with code zero. That means there were no errors, which is a good thing. So we're, we're happy about that. So this is your very first Java program. So you should try this and get it to run. If it doesn't work, you can't move forward. There's, there's no point in trying anything else because you're stuck. Um, let's go ahead and real quick and go back to Repolit and take a look out of it. I don't know why I did that to me. Um, so you see here it says class main, as this is main.java. So Replit gave you main.java to start with. Notice it's no different, basically the same thing I typed. It's just, you know, they just call theirs main instead. So if I click run, and you see, also see J-A-V-A-C, so this is compiling for you. And then it prints out hello world. So we get the same result on both, on both systems, I guess you'd say. Uh, again, I prefer to do it here in Genie. I think there's a lot of value in, in learning this, but if, you're, if you don't have a system that's capable of doing that, then feel, of course, feel free to use whatever works for you. Now, here are some common mistakes you might see. So if I take out that quotation mark and I command S, I save it, and if I have to hit compile, you'll see we'll get an error. It says error, unclosed string literal. It says hello world.java, so that's the program, the file that we're in. There's a six here. It tells us exactly where the error is. And it says unclosed string literal. So there's a little uh, pointer here, points to here. This is the opening quotation mark. And it's because we're missing the closing quotation mark. So we save it, we compile it, we do it again. Let's see what happens when we get rid of the semicolon. I'm not sure if that matters or not, but let's see. Okay, yeah, it does matter, duh. Uh, same thing, hello world Java, six error semicolon expected, and it actually points to the end of the line. So it tells you where that error is. So it tries to tell you what problems you have. 
Now let's say if I misspell print ln. Let's try and compile that. Again, cannot find symbol. It tells you where the problem is. It's pointing to the area where the problem is. It says print n string. It says it does not know what that is. Okay, so if you make a mistake, it kind of tries to tell you what the problem is. Let's see if we instead of void, we'll do void. Okay, so again, cannot find symbol. Now this time it's in line three. So it's kind of telling us what the problem is. It doesn't what void is. Okay, so uh, it's kind of cool. Now let's go ahead and call this hello world two and compile it. Now notice how it compiles, but if I try to run it, well, it runs because the old one's in there. Let me get rid of the old one real quick. Documents, because the old one's still there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that to the rubbish bin. And now, again, I'm gonna compile it, and I'm gonna run it, and you get an error. Could not find or load main class hello world. This is a common problem that beginners have, is they forget that this has to match this. So if these two don't match, it will compile, but when you run it, you get this uh, class not found exception. Okay, because it's looking for hello world, not hello world two. So make sure they match. Okay, so that's it. That is your first Java program. So just to review, we went to the web page where you can download the Java SDK. You got to download it and install that first. It's pretty big, two three hundred megabytes. Then you need to download the Genie Editor. There are others. This is just the one that I use. Uh, Visual Studio Code is, is a popular alternative. You choose whatever works for you. Then there is also REPL.IT, which is an online coding environment. If you can't download or install that on your computer for some reason, you can go ahead and use that instead. We did the Hello World example. And again, you have to make sure that everything is capitalized correctly, Make sure everything is spelled correctly. If I change this P to a capital P, it will not work. Okay, you'll get an error. It says, in this case, identifier expected. Um, so the error message changes a little bit based on what kind of problem it is. Uh, and there's a lot of different things here that you need to keep track of. But this is always going to be your basic structure of your main Java program uh, as you move Forward, at least for now and yeah I think that's about it so uh, we talked about compiling make sure you compile it first every time you make a change you have to save the file compile it then you can execute it because sometimes what will happen is I see students do this a lot is they will let's see they'll compile it okay it's running then hello world I am here uh, that looks like point then they run it and they say well it didn't work well, that's because they didn't compile it again. So you have to compile it before you execute. Okay, so now you can see that the changes have uh, you know, shown up where we expected them to. Okay, so that is it. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comment down below. And as I like to say, keep on coding. Take care.